Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Oh, I went up in my collection and found another one to work on. Uh, I've only got one of these, so don't have any spare parts, but I think most of it's all there, at least all the important stuff. Um, I looked it up in the book, and it's the first year in the first month that they made these, December of 1923. It's a Briggs & Stratton model PB. It's a two and a half bore and two and a half stroke. And it says the output is uh, got a gear reduction of eight to one. I thought it was probably off the cam, but that can't be off the cam. So, looks like the first thing I'm going to have to do is come up with a base because these things don't really have any mounting uh, base on them. They got two bolts here on this side, two bolts here, and the pan hangs, hangs down underneath. <coughs> this is a really strange setup. Maybe I can get it to set there. Hopefully it doesn't keel over. It just uses... Uh, I take out a, like a disc in there, sort of like a, a reed would be, I think, or else there's actually a valve in there with a light spring on it. And the exhaust valve is down here. And it looks like you might have had to crank this to start it right here, and that's all broken up. So I'm not sure what we're going to wind up with starting-wise, whether I can refurbish that, or whether we'll wind up with a rope start or something on it. Not sure. And the carburetor according to the book is the correct one but it looks like it's been maybe broken off or something and somebody's done a repair there yeah, the carburetor does everything moves on it so it looks like it's all there it's a Tilson and that must be the breather. And this must have been something to do with the throttle cable or something. So, I guess, I don't know, I guess first thing I'll do is try to come up with some kind of a mount so I can at least have it set and steady while I'm uh, working on it. So, see you in a bit. Well, I found some stuff to make a base out of, but I thought, now nah, before I do that, I'm going to take a peek at the innards. Uh, took the oil pan off. <clears throat> the book says it has constant level splash lubrication. So, I guess what that means is that it has an oil pump, which is right here. That pumps oil up into this, and then the crankshaft has a rod has a little dipper on it there. Everything looks really nice inside. Looks like it's got a brass rod. I haven't really checked a whole lot. Uh, Oh, a little bit of end play there, I do, or end play, but that might be all right. So we'll check into it a little, a little deeper, but looks good so far. And this is the rod that runs off the cam that runs a oil pump. So I'll keep you filled in as I go. Okay, checking out this uh, crankshaft 
end play in the in the rod, which I didn't think was too awful bad. But I also noticed that uh, we got a little uh, extra room clearance this way, so I pulled the rod cap off, and it has an insert bearing, and it also has some shims. Uh, well, just one on each side. They're really thick, so. Let's turn it in the, in the brass, and I think this is a brass insert. And I was trying to figure out a way that, you know, I could put these, uh, if they were steel, I could put them on the magnetic chuck on the surface grinder and grind them, but uh, that wasn't going to work. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to super glue these in place. And then I got a little surface plate here. I'm going to put a piece of sandpaper on there. And I'm just going to work at my hand and uh, get these thinned down a little bit and keep checking. I thought I had some plastic gauge around here someplace, but if I do, I don't remember where I hit it or else I've used it all. So I'm just going to go by, uh, by feel and uh, get rid of that extra clearance there so that's how I'm going to attempt to do that okay I got the shims glued in place and uh, thought I'd try to show you how much clearance I got hopefully you guys can see that it's, it's quite loose and it didn't show any signs of damage on the bearing or the crankshaft, so got lucky there. <clears throat> so that's what I got to deal with. Okay, I got this uh, fit up pretty good. And I did measure the crankshaft to make sure it wasn't out of ground. It's only out around about one thousandths of an inch. Uh, just wanted to make sure it hadn't worn the top and the bottom from working back and forth but I thought I'd better check the uh, oil hole in the top bearing cap make sure it wasn't clogged up or anything and I can't get anything to go through it so I haven't pulled it off yet I'm thinking that maybe somebody's had replaced that and didn't put it in the right position or something's going on there because I don't think it could get oil very well so hopefully you'll be able to see. Okay, there it is. So why wasn't I able to get a... Oh, there she goes. Okay, so I think I'm going to make sure that that's cleaned out really, really good. And uh, get this cleaned up and get it back in place and make sure that uh, all the holes line up before I put her back together, get her lubed up. Okay, got her stuck back together. I was looking around in there and it said this output was eight to one and it's running off the cam and I thought boy that don't sound right but the camshaft has four lobes on it and it just runs the exhaust valve so I guess that's why um, and I got the drill on her you can see she runs nice I don't hear, hear anything bad or loose sounding and I've got pretty good compression so I don't even think I'm going to mess with the valves I think they're going to be fine and like I said sometimes you're better off not messing with stuff so 
I think I'm going to leave everything alone and go to work on, uh, well, i got to get this cleaned up and this oil pan back together. Oh, and I did. Now let me move you back. I don't know that. Okay, I did get the oil pan cleaned up and the oil pump. And when I was cleaning this up, there's a screen on, in the bottom here. And I could fill that right up with uh, gasoline and it wouldn't even run out the bottom. It was clogged up that bad. And I got her all cleaned up now. Had a pretty good bunch of goo in the bottom of it. So I got a, there's a check ball that goes in the bottom. And there's a spring. Then there's another plunger with a check ball in it. And that goes in there. And then this rod right here is what works the oil pump up and down. And when I got done, <clears throat> I filled this up above the screen with some gasoline and work this up and down and as thin as gas was it, it pumped it fine so it should be a-okay with the uh, oil so I can get the bottom rest of this cleaned up and uh, go ahead and put the oil pan back on then we can go to work on the spark and the carburetor well I got the flywheel off boy <laughs> She ain't real pretty in there. It uh, definitely looks like it might have had some, might have been laying on its face or something. Like, like that. And had some water in it for a while or something. Not absolutely sure, but wish me luck. Okay, I took an air gun and blew all that blue stuff off of there. Uh, pulled the points out so the wires are just floating. And I have a little uh, rechargeable lithium ion battery, 3.7 volt. This is quite often how I check my coils and stuff. And I'll just touch it on here to ground. Well, there we go. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we have spark. Let's see if I can get you a little closer. Oh, come on, my. Where did the old spark plug go? There it is. Oh, the coil's good. <clears throat> and probably the condenser is okay too, but I'm going to take it right out of there because i got to get them points right out of there to get them clean. So, makes me happy that the coil is good. So I think we're going to be able to save her. Well, here's a quick up update on the PB ignition. Decided to pull that back and plate right off in order to get her cleaned up decent. Um, it, it cleaned up pretty nice. I used a real fine wire brush and a toothbrush and the coil and stuff. Cleaned up a lot better than I thought it would. Um, let's see. The condenser was okay, but I found one that had a lot better reading, so I'm going to use that. There's the points. They look like they got a uh, copper point on them. Kind of different. I never happened to see that before. And this is the stationary point. And this stationary point goes, let's see, like that. And then this goes like that. And then this 
what's left of this fiber washer insulates it uh, between that and this piece of fiber insulate this this portion of the points so I've got to do a little hunt and see if I got anything like that if not I got some some plastic I can turn one on the lathe so it shouldn't be a problem um, flywheel cleaned up pretty nice and the magnets seem to have magnetism so This is what that part of it looks like where that bolts onto. So we'll get that all cleaned up in a new gasket, maybe. Hey, the snow's almost gone. That's a good thing. Except then they're saying we're going to get some more, maybe. Hopefully they're wrong. Well, I got some paint. Got her cleaned and got some paint on, on stuff before we start some assembly. I thought I might as well get her all cleaned up before I put that back and plate and stuff together. So, making progress. So I went out and scrounged up a piece of plate to make a base for it. So I'm going to make that base get it in installed on there so I can uh, work on that ignition stuff, get it all reassembled. That's where I'm at at this point. Okay, I got my base pieces cut out of that piece of plate and got them cleaned up. Made some feet that are going to go on the bottom. And I got one set up here, getting ready to, to weld the feet onto it. <clears throat> so we'll get them welded up and get her finished cleaned up and get some paint on her and then we'll have a base for it. Got those mounts welded up, squirted some paint on them, and I also uh, picked out a small gas tank to put on it. Uh, now I got to make a bracket to mount it. Some of the original ones from the pictures I've seen, this bracket come up over top like that, and they had a the gas tank mounted up here. And some of them had a bracket that came from here over and went out a ways and come back down. They had a gas tank mounted there. <clears throat> but I'm just going to use a small tank. And there's two holes here that are tapped out. Uh, one of them is also used to hold the top of the shroud in place. So I'm going to use those and I'm going to make a mount to mount this tank. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I got a piece of uh, pipe over here in the bandsaw, cutting it off to get the curved part of it for the bottom of the gas tank mount. So I'll probably take that. Get that done, we ought to be able to do some assembly. A little slow getting started this morning. It was uh, minus 5.1 at 7.30, so uh, it's a little chilly out here in the shop. I, keep going over and <laughs> getting my pinkies warm over by the heater. Anyways, <clears throat> I've been working on this bracket for the gas tank. Got her pretty well done, mounted on there just for a trial. These were the two little pieces that I used off that piece of pipe I had in the bandsaw. They're the right curvature for the tank. So that's going to sit, yeah, let's see, going to have for the, about like that, there, now you can see, <laughs> I had to look underneath to see where the outlet was, that's going to mount about like that, going to make some straps for that, get it painted, and I think got all the, all the pieces made for it. So hang in there, we'll get her done. Okay, working on the uh, straps for the
gas tank. I uh, saved some of that banding that comes on pallets of stuff. Seems to work pretty nice for making straps for gas tanks. Pretty tough, but yet easy to work with. So, I'm going to put the final bend in it on my little roller. Because this one will uh, open up so you can put stuff in and take it out. For my older one, bigger older one over there, you can't do that with it. There she goes. Don't have to. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah. Don't have to fight with it now. Got a little bit of the assembly started. Got the oil pan back on. Got the back and plate back on for the magneto. And I got the new uh, engine stand support, whatever you want to call it, bolted up, and they seem to. They don't look too bad and they seem to be functional. They're nice and solid. Sets nice and flat, so get the magneto and stuff back on. Get some spark in her. Hey, I'm gonna make this little uh, bushing for the stationary point that was broken to out of got a piece of plastic in there. I need a 3 16 hole and a little bit of a ledge on there. I'm just using a little mini lathe. Just use a cutoff tool for the whole thing because I just need a little ledge, a little bit thinner than this part. Give that a try.
There we go. Yeah, I pulled my engine stand or mount or whatever you want to call it off and decided to put some pinstriping, I guess you call it. Ain't the greatest looking thing. I'm a little bit shaky, but that's what she looks like. I got her drying in front of the heat. And also, um, over in the, the big lathe, I've got the pulley set up. And I got it in my big chuck, and it's just about as big as it'll hold. It's a little scary with them things sticking out that far, but I don't have the other set of jaws for this chuck. So I got that set up in there, and I'm going to clean up this uh, mess on there. I'm not sure if that was for a crank or, or what it was, but it's chipped and broke, and somebody's brazed it, and just going to clean it up and so so it looks decent so while I'm drying I'm going to be doing that then I'm going to start on the ignition okay let's get started putting this uh, <coughs> points coil all that good stuff together get that piece of fiber down first and the points with the new uh, insulator. And the points. So you got a spring here. I think I got her on the wrong side. Like so. It's got a little notch that it drops into. Change a little bit when I tighten it down. <clears throat> yeah, feels pretty good. Just a little bit of drag there. Make sure we got it tight. Yep. Okay. <clears throat>
something, sir. solder that because you might put her up that little fine wire.
Okay, <coughs> next I got to get the, the wire coming from the coil and the capacitor wire soldered onto this lug, which is part of the stationary points. But before the, I do that, I'm going to go get my ohmmeter and make sure that this is not grounded. It needs to be isolated. When the points touch, that's what actually grounds it. So I'm going to do that and get them wires soldered on. Um, you guys probably don't need to see that, so be back in a bit. Got the wire soldered on, and I didn't like this long wire. It seemed like it had an awful lot of freedom in there. So I found a little clip, and there was a screw here that wasn't doing anything except plugging a hole, I guess. So I got that clamped down so it can't flop around in there. So. Hopefully that'll eliminate a problem in the future. Hey, okay, got the flywheel on. <clears throat> and we got spark. Hopefully you can see it. Just my drill battery gets down. <laughs> Doesn't want to go. We got spark. Now this is the point where I always got to see if it's going to run, even though I don't have the carburetor or anything on it. And I squirted a little bit of gas in the where the carburetor would mount, a little bit in the spark plug hole. I was real light with it because I didn't want to slobber it on my paint. So let's give her a try. Might not be enough gas, I'm not sure. Yep, going to run. Screwed my nut off. Good thing it didn't run any longer, huh? <laughs> okay, tore the carb apart, got it pretty well along. Um, this one you can put it all together and leave the cover off the, the float bowl and uh, actually see if it's working. I'm going to turn the gas on. There she comes. Up comes a float. Shuts the gas off. So you can kind of check the float level and make sure that it shuts off without having the gas. Thought that was pretty neat, thought I'd show you. Well, I got the carburetor <clears throat> back together and stuck it on there, put the temporary gas tank on it, and it sort of runs when it feels like it. But there's, I couldn't get the jets out of the carburetor, and there was another <clears throat> one right here that goes into the idle section that I couldn't get out. So I don't think I'm going to be able to save that carburetor. The outside of it looked really nice, but in the inside didn't really look bad, but she just won't come apart. But I went up in my collection, and I had one other one that's the same general carburetor, but it's just a whisker different, and it looked really, really bad, as you can see. But, <laughs> every piece come out of it nicely. All the jets come out. And it, the, the carburetors don't make any sense. So, hopefully, I'm going to be able to rescue this one. Now, this one doesn't have a choke. It's got the casting place where it goes but it was never installed which doesn't bother me any just put your finger over it some of them don't have chokes and uh, this is what they had on it for a stop for the idle adjustment and they had the the uh, throttle plate in backwards so hopefully I can take the throttle plate and shaft and stuff out of the other one and, and put in this one. Uh, otherwise I think 
this one if I can get get it cleaned up decent. I think she's going to be savable. So, wish me luck. Okay, I got that other carburetor cleaned up. Got her mounted. Temporary gas tank. Um, this time I made sure that I'm recording. Last time I thought I was recording the, the first run with that other carburetor, but you guys didn't get to see it. Because apparently I didn't push the button, or else I pushed it on and back off again. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, uh, I wound up using the shaft out of the other carburetor so I have this throttle stop and of course it was longer than the other one because they didn't drill this all the way through here so I had to drill that all the way through so this would fit um, what else did I do? oh I used the top off the other carburetor the other top was alright but it only had two screws in it and there was never a place here for a third screw, but this casting was all tapped and, and everything for it. So I don't know what the deal was with that. So I thought I'd use the top off my other one. So let's turn the gas on and see if we can get her to run. This one doesn't have a choke, so I'm going to have to hold my finger over it. Hopefully I can pull this rope and hold my finger over it. I have to see some gas. top of this carburetor is wet but it does run it hasn't been run much hopefully after it runs it'll smooth out some but I think I've seen these running at uh, a couple shows quite some time ago and they didn't run very smooth either maybe that's just the nature of the beast I'm, I'm not sure I hope not hope I can get it smoothed out 
So I guess at this point we know it runs. I'm going to work on getting the uh, gas tank mounted. Next. And then it'll be pretty well along, except for getting it to run a little better. So, see you in a bit. Okay, she's done. December 1923. Briggs and Stratton PB. Got the gas tank mounted, fuel bowl on it, gas line, and the pulley. I'll have to find a muffler that's more correct. And I'll put you up on a tripod and we'll fire. Sure, sure makes her growly. And I haven't tried to adjust it anymore, but uh, it does seem like it's running a little bit smoother, so might just need run because I didn't take the valves out or anything. <clears throat> so, and I think uh, that when I do run this, I'm going to run some two cycle oil in with the gas because that intake valve has no lubrication. It's not subjected to the crankcase oil at all, so might be good for it. <clears throat> so if you uh, enjoyed this one, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And see you next time. Well, you thought the video was over, didn't you? And so did I. Put it outside. It's been running for... 15 20 minutes and it seems like it's moved right out. Now. Maybe she just needed to run a little. <laughs> <laughs>